So I'm usually always pretty excited to film a reaction video, but I don't think I have been this excited in a while. This is just the floppy cover, but this is actually one of the um, albums that's been sitting in my record collection since the beginning. My auntie bought it in 1979 for eight Australian dollars. And it's been with her since then. And then she passed it on to me like five, six years ago. And I have not listened to this album yet. I actually didn't recognize it when she first gave it to me. Obviously since then I have learnt it's a post-punk album. It's 1979. It's a debut. I will probably love it. I've heard all these things. I wanted to do something special for it, but I didn't know how, but this just makes sense. Doing my reaction video and always having this memory to look back on. So I am going to listen to Gang of Four's Entertainment today. My thoughts going into this album are that I have like a great feeling about it. I feel pretty confident that I'm going to like this album. My auntie's taste is pretty similar to mine. Like she loves Joy Division, The Smiths, The Cure, B-52s, Devo. And this is just somehow an album that didn't reach my radar during my teenage years. Post-punk goodness. Post-punk is my favorite genre, by the way, <laughs> if you're wondering. Starting with bass. Whoa! Well, he's, this guitar is so strange. Every time I hear this though, it's more and more catchy. Like it hooks me. Just a little bit more. I don't know what to think. Okay, I love the chorus. What the frick was that? What? Whoa, it's so, it's so off. You definitely can't say it's boring. Like, this is so entertainment. Entertaining, entertaining. <laughs> oh. I think I liked it, yeah. So strange. Well, same thing. Oh no, probably a little less weird this one. <laughs> Dream of the perfect life. Talking heads, eh? Around the same time. Yeah, this reminds me a lot of talking heads. I like this too! Really warm bass there. The guitars are like completely taking over the strap though. It's mess this guitar. Yeah.
Nah, I like how it goes back into the repaint. I could definitely dance to that as well. What is this album? Interesting. Bass and drag rhythm. Bruh, this guitarist is so crazy. This song is really picking it up here. I don't know. I think Not For Great Men just scrapes in with a heart. It's interesting because I'm like, I can't stop moving. I can't stop dancing because it's so funky. The guitars is really out there and really strange and weird and going in like different directions. Angular. The guitars are really angular. Like there's a lot of jumps up and down and here and there. Like I think on the first track I had to like get used to it for a second because you know guitars aren't usually like that. Usually easy listening guitars is the complete opposite but once I'm in it, now I'm in it. The bass is so nice, the bass is so warm, I love bass like yeah. I already love bass so give me good bass, we're good. really like his lyrics. In Natural's not in it, that was interesting. It's really cynical, it's really dreary and critical of what's going on in the world I guess but I feel like I need to listen to more to like fully get a grasp on that. Okay, Damage Goods is the next track. Let's give that a listen and go into the middle part of the album. You even jump in between the bass and guitar. Ooh. This sounds like the 2000s.
going to talk about that song later. <laughs> we need to talk about that. <laughs> that literally sounded like a 2000s track. That was so strange. Taurus is so ahead of his time. love the guitar on this track. It's probably the most straightforward sounding like poppy track so far. But I don't mind it. Oh my god. 
gosh, this is so good. Perfect track. That was really good. Really, really good! I enjoyed that track a lot. Really interesting set of tracks there. I didn't dislike any of them, but if I'm looking from track 4 through to track 7 here, Damaged Goods to Essence Rare, sort of the bulk I just listened to, the, t the two middle, Return the Gift and Guns Before Butter, they didn't stand out to me as much. There were parts of the songs I really liked, but there were just other parts that I thought were a bit underwhelming. And also they're sandwiched in between like two of the best tracks in the album so far, Damaged Goods and I Found That Essence Rare, which you know it's hard to compete. But Damaged Goods, like how do you follow that up? That track is not only amazing and the best track on the album so far, but could be put, I I'll keep saying this, could literally take that song and place it into like a, I don't know, a block party album like the late 2000s. Let me take you back a few decades because we've got some really good stuff that's pretty much the exact same thing going on. It's just insane. They were 30 years ahead of their time. It's it's crazy. So Damaged Goods was an amazing track. And then I found that Essence Rare was like, as I said, the most like poppy song on the album so far. But I actually think it worked well. It wasn't overly poppy. They didn't like it. I still thought it was catchy. I thought the guitar was great. But also I found that Essence Rare like, what is, like these lyrics are so weird. Because they're quite political, obviously. Um, Like they have their opinions. They're voicing them. They don't like capitalism. <laughs> Not much is obvious. They probably prefer more socialism, I'm guessing, just from like what I'm picking up in this track, um, like Marxism, socialism. This album, it feels very contemporary, like in the, in the sound, but then also the lyrics still make sense. I love all the changes. Like this track is so fast paced. It just keeps going.
Seriously, it's way ahead. things to think about here. This, this album is making me think a lot. I, this is the first time <laughs> this has happened. I think I need to re-listen to a track quickly. I don't know what I thought of it. Like, Contract just needs a listen. Just one moment. Alright, Contract is a, I, I liked that one. <laughs> I really loved the groove of Contract. I thought it was super snazzy. Loved the funk elements. Loved the choppiness of the guitars in Contract. Do! Do! Da da da! At home, he's a tourist, really stripped back. Not much to it, especially in the verses. The chorus was definitely my favorite part of the track, but I feel like the verses sort of lost it for me a little bit with At Home, He's a Tourist. But yeah, Glass and Contract, I really liked. Once again, I just gotta mention it, I really love the lyrics. This whole entire album, I feel like it's also talking about the same thing. Entertainment, capitalism, why it's bad. Even this album, you know, is a form of entertainment, it's a form of capitalism when you go out and you sell it and you make money from it. It's interesting, they're labeling this album as a form of entertainment, but then also sort of like bashing the idea of entertainment and the idea of buying and consuming. It's this weird paradox this album's got going on, um, which I think also complements just the sound of it in general because everything sounds so off. Everything sounds like paradox in a weird way all the time. I like the concept of it a lot. Let's listen to the last two tracks, 545 and the like Anthrax. Anthrax reminds me of like the metal band. What is this thing that keeps popping up? What is that? Some type of like harmonica. How can I sit and eat my tea by when I die flat? They swapped it out. Were they born to lie in state? Defend the ever stagnant great. The ever stagnant great. I 
I like the repetitive nature of the lyrics. Reminds me of Ray Dance the Shame. Let it be known, the bridge of that track, that was it. So I needed. Oh, different vocalists on this track. I love how like echo and reverb on the guitar towards the back end of this album. So I'm playing around with it. Those drums came in real nice. That was super clean. Face is so good. I don't know where we are. Come on. I don't know where we are in the lyrics. I've never listened to a track that like does something like that before, really. I mean I have. This last track is so cool. Love will get you like a case of anthrax, and that's something I don't want to catch. Yeah, let him go. Let him play. subdued and low-key than the rest of the album on Love Like Anthrax, but I don't know, it did so many different things that I just loved. I loved how noisy the guitar was, the start and then the bridge, the outro and the drums were so good, and then the verses were so cool as well, just, oh my gosh. I did not like any song. I liked every single song. I would listen to this entire album the whole way through, for sure, which is why it's so great I have it on record, because you can't skip tracks when you listen to record. And I'm, I'm happy. I don't want to skip any of the tracks. That whole album was great. How did they do that? That's so good. This is what happens when you grow up in the 2000s and you listen to all the music that was like inspired by this, but you don't listen to this. And then your brain just can't compute it. Like you, I go back to listen to this from 1979. I keep saying it, 1979. I go back and listen to it and I'm like, huh? How did, wait, there's like, 25 years between that and that? How? So cool. Even like the Radiohead influence, like the Rage Against the Machine influence, I can I can see that as well. Just stuff that doesn't particularly sound like this, but just took elements from it. Oh wow, this album's really special. I'm so happy to own this album. You were seeing this here first, like me just gushing for the first time. I can't believe I've had this sitting in my record collection for so long and I never listened to it. That's the funny part.
The first half of the album, it felt like a dance club. We just like go crazy. And then I started listening to the lyrics more and I was like, whoa, wait, this is like sort of depressing though. It's a bit, bit cynical. I loved the lyrics. I loved how they went about it. I thought it was really snazzy, snappy, interesting, and hit hard. All of the lyrics, yeah, it was good. Um, very easy to understand, not like going by my head at all. The second half of the album, a lot more like echo on the drums, reverb and the guitar. The last track especially was so chill in this weird way. Um, a lot more stripped back on the second half of the album. I would say the first half of the album I liked a little bit more, but the second half of the album is just like, if anything, even more interesting. It's like the first half of the album, I was getting accustomed to this new sound, this different style that Gang of Four has, and then I got used to it. And then by the second half, side B, they just completely switched it up again. They just, they kept developing it developing the sound of the album as the album went so I was like always on my toes overall I really enjoyed it like I can't say enough maybe like my score will tell you how much I enjoyed it because this is going to be a highly rated album by me I could gush about this for hours I loved it so yeah my you know I love post-punk it makes sense I've never reacted to a post-punk album I think here before I've reacted to punk and I can definitely see the influence that punk has on entertainment. But it's cool to also listen to a, a post-punk album here that I think actually does take a lot of influence from punk. More so than like other post-punk stuff does. Cause like for instance, I'm very acquainted with Joy Division. But Joy Division, even though it's post-punk, is a lot more subdued and a lot more depressing and very sad and dark, I guess. It's not as upbeat as punk, even though it is post-punk. Entertainment's like post-punk, it's not exactly punk, but it still has, I would say, more of a punk feel than like Joy Division does. And I like how post-punk as a genre can have this umbrella within it of like more upbeat post-punk and then like a bit more subdued post-punk. It's an 87.5! I mean, that's the highest rating I've given an album so far. This makes it seem like I'll be handing out 87.5 every day of the week, which is not the case. Me finding an album that I love this much doesn't happen every day of the week, so I am very happy. I'll be smiling the rest of the day. <laughs> you know, the best figure as well is this is like my auntie's original Australian pressing. Like I have an original pressing of this album. It's not in the best shape, this record, but it's just got so much love poured into it from my auntie. And now, from me, this actually blew my mind a little bit. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, you can check out the full cut that's up on my Patreon, or you can also check out my next couple of reactions early up on Patreon. They'll already be up there. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye. See you soon.